When building our confidence intervals, one of our most important pieces is our margin of error. Now our margin of error, we want to try to keep it as small as we possibly can. Uh, the bigger that it gets, it makes our range very, very large, and it makes our, our estimation, our intervals less useful. The tighter that we can keep those intervals, uh, the better. So sometimes what we actually do is we decide that we, that what we can decide is that we want to say that our margin of error, we only want it to be so big, and there are some things that we can do to try to keep that size down. So let's go back and let's kind of open up and see what the margin of error equation is for both, uh, if we're dealing with means or if we're dealing with proportions. Okay, so let's start off with means. And I'm going to just signify this by margin of error, and we'll just call it x bar. And we're going to start off supposing that we know the population standard deviation. So our, this is going to be z alpha divided by 2 multiplied by sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, so when we are doing our confidence intervals, we have a couple of things that we can change. So, sigma, we can't change that set that just is the population standard deviation. But we can decide how many people we're going to involve in our study, and we can decide our alpha level. So typically, uh, we set our alpha level at the very beginning. So before we go out and we do our study or anything, we decide that we want either a 90 or a 95 or, or whatever confidence interval that or, confidence level that we want, we set that. Once we set alpha, then we just we go and look up what the z value is and we can plug it in. Okay, so that leaves us only one thing to change, and that we, is that we can adjust the sample size. So let's say that we want a specific margin of error. Let's say we want, I don't know, we're weighing some animal and we want plus or minus two pounds. We'd set this as two pounds, we put the standard deviation here, and we set our alpha level, and then we can adjust just the sample size. So if we basically just rearrange this equation, just do a little bit of swapping around, we can say that the minimum sample size for means is going to be n equals, and we're going to do z alpha divided by 2 multiplied by sigma divided by our margin of error, and we are going to square it. Now, you might be thinking, well, we had another margin of error equation for means, uh, and that was if we didn't know what the population standard deviation was, we just used the sample standard deviation. Well, that won't work here for calculating our minimum sample size, and it's because we have to take our sample first before we know what the standard deviation is, and if we take our sample first, then we can't adjust what our sample size is. Anyhow, we really can't do it unless if we know what the population standard deviation is. So, if we know what the population standard deviation is, we could calculate out a minimum sample size for a specific margin of error. And on the, the flip side, uh, if we don't know what the population standard deviation is, we're, we're stuck. We can't do a minimum sample size. So the, the best that you can do is just get as big a sample as you can in order to make sure that your margin of error is as small as possible. All right, but if we are looking at proportions, we actually have an, some extra tools in our kind of in our repertoire. We don't need to know what the population standard deviation is, so we can just go and say, okay, we want to have a minimum standard deviation of like plus or minus 3%. That's pretty typical in political polling. And we can know how big our sample size needs to be if that's what, what we want to do. Okay, so here is how that this works. Uh, so first of all, let's look at our margin of error for P. All right, so we know that our margin of error here is going to be Z alpha divided by 2 multiplied by, and this is going to be the square root of P times PC divided by N. Okay, so let's rearrange this and figure out the minimum sample size. So if we do some rearranging, we're going to have N equals, 
looks very similar. Z alpha divided by 2 multiplied by, oops, give me a second. Let's open this up just a wee bit. Square root of P times PC divided by uh, margin of error. And then square. Okie dokie. So you might be saying, well, heck, we can't do this um, because in order to find our P's, we have to take a sample first. And then we'd have to then plug in our, uh, our p-values there, or our, our sample proportions. The thing is, is that because proportions have a maximum and a minimum, there's actually a worst case scenario that we could assume. So if we want to assume this worst case scenario, we need to figure out what is the maximum that this p times pc can actually be. OK, so if we're looking for this maximum value, if you want, you could do a little bit of calculus and we could figure out what, what the maximum is. Uh, or you could just start plugging some numbers in and going back and forth and multiplying. Uh, and we could try to figure that it out that way. Uh, but let me, let me just show you real quick. So if we assume a worst case scenario, and the worst case scenario, let me put this down here. So worst case scenario is if P is equal to 0.5. So worst case scenario that, that we can be in, it's going to make this P times PC the biggest uh, that it possibly can be. Uh, and let me give you a couple examples of this. Uh, so let's just do it right here. So if P, let's say equals 0.5, we do 0.5 times 0.5, and that is going to equal 0.25. Alright, well, let's say then that p is equal to 0.1, and we multiply this by 0.9, right? Because that would be p complement. Well, that is going to be equal to 0 0.09. Uh, let's do another example. Let's do 0.2 times 0.8. It's going to be 0.16. Anyhow, we I could do a bunch more examples for you, but just know that the worst case scenario is if P uh, equals 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 gives us 0 0.25. And that is our worst case scenario. And because we have a worst case scenario, we can just say, you know what, I'm going to assume that we're going to have a worst case scenario for our, uh, basically for our spread, or that it's the most spread out that it possibly can be. And if that happens, then I can say, well, let's assume worst case scenario and we'll set everything else to what it needs to be. Up here, when we're dealing with means, we don't have a worst case scenario. There's not a worst case scenario that this, of what the standard deviation can be, right? It, the only requirement for the standard deviation is that it's a positive number. Uh, so there's no worst case scenario. But down here, because proportions have a maximum and a minimum of that it can't be less than zero or greater than one, we actually do have a worst case scenario here. So because of that, we just, whenever we do these, we basically assume a worst case scenario. Uh, and then we set whatever our margin of error we want it to be. If we want it to be 3%, if we want it to be 5%, we can put it in there. And then our alpha, we are able to use to figure out our z-score. So that's how we can calculate out our minimum sample size. Now there is one other caveat with our minimum sample size. Occasionally, uh, we have a rough idea of what the, um, of what the standard deviation, or sorry, of what the proportions are supposed to be. Maybe we think that, we, that it's going to be 10%. If we have some prior knowledge to what it can be, we don't have to assume this worst case scenario. We can, for that particular instance, we can say, you know what, I think it's going to be about 10%. Maybe we've done a previous study. And so you can put 10% and 0.9 there, and then you can calculate it out. And that can make 
the sample size a little bit smaller. Uh, so just to reiterate, if we had any idea of what the, the proportions are going to be, we can put those in. If not, that's fine. We just assume a worst case scenario. So those are the equations of actually how to calculate out your minimum sample size. Uh, and we'll do an example later on of actually how to apply these equations.